Hello, everybody. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And this is So I'm Watching Mayfair, which is season one, episode two, The Dark Place. Well, Rowan's going through it. Oh, man. She Real is hard. A big, big old hot mess. Yeah. yeah. She hasn't showered. Even after she gets out of the shower, she looks like she hasn't showered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, like they said that it had been two weeks since her mother died and yeah. she had not missed a day of work. But. Yeah. And I was I wasn't super following what Keck was saying. Also, lol that Keck is already back to work after a brain bleed. <laughs> I was like I don't. But I mean, I guess it was like the beginning oh, of when the mother got sick again. So it, yes, could, it was okay. it's probably been months. Okay, good call. I'm glad, was we, like, <laughs> I'm glad we worked through that because I was like, <laughs> that was a pretty serious brain bleed. Yeah, that she, and like, you're the one that's like, you need to go visit the psych ward just to like get the okay. Okay, Mr. Brain Bleed. Oh, sure. brother. No, you're totally right. I am that. Yeah, but it's been I would I would probably give it six months. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Minimum. But yeah, no, she is looking real, real tough. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, Which was he saying that her patients are staying under longer? Yeah. Okay. Longer than before, even though then she came back with, yeah, but I'm still the fastest one in the rotation. Look, here's the thing. I'm uh, I'm not on his team because he's terrible and he's like very condescending to her, but she has a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also she's clearly using work to like fill a void and everything. And I get that. And it you like obviously she needs a break. And also what would this show be if she didn't go to New Orleans and learn she's a witch? Right. But leaving all that aside, He's not completely wrong. No. She needs to take a break. Yes. And that type of job is not the type of job that you can just kind of like, just grin and bear it. Yeah. <laughs> as much no. as you can. No. Like you are literally opening human beings up, Especially so. because she seems to be getting drunk enough to sleep every night. And then she's also being followed by Cyprian. So she's having like bouts of paranoia because she thinks that it's to do with the skeevy billionaire yeah daniel lemley lemley and so she's she thinks it's because of him like someone knows that she killed him um i mean he deserved it yeah he really (laughs) he really really did so there's like just a lot going on she like you know isn't taking care of her boat she isn't taking care of herself she's you know drinking too much all this stuff so again i fundamentally can't be on his side but also Girlie, just take a break. Take a break. Like, take a break. I feel like you at least get like a couple days bereavement. Yeah. Like at least I'm, take that. I'm sure you get all kinds of stuff. Yeah. For uh, with her stature at the hospital, I'm sure she's got yeah. leave for days, <laughs> weeks, maybe even months. Uh, yeah. And there's no way that she takes it. No. Either. So uh Keck sends her to a psychiatrist and she goes up to talk to her. She's like not being super combative but she's also not being super helpful yeah she just is like i've dealt with my mother's death and i'm like mm, me you thinks know? you haven't ma'am. i don't think you have um and then the doctor the psychiatrist she gets uh, a headache and rowan immediately thinks that she's causing it and mm-hmm. she's like no i get these like all the time it's totally fine but then she starts getting a nosebleed and Rowan is out the door so fast. <laughs> there is a Rowan shaped hole <laughs> through in the that door. door. <laughs> and she's like, whoosh. So we don't really get to work through that, but she's still having a terrible time. She's calling the adoption agency that, she, that her mother always told her she came from. They, it turns out they weren't even in operation when Rowan was adopted. So there's no way it could have been them. She's like, she's freaking out. By all accounts, that adoption agency lady was, like, nice, but there's she nothing she can do about yeah. it. Um, so then she finally totally loses it when she leaves the psychiatrist's office. She goes out to her car. There's bird crap everywhere because there's, like, a billion crows in the tree right next to her car. And then two of them just literally fall down dead on top of her car. It was three. Was it three? It was three. I saw two. I missed the third <laughs> one. So three dead crows. And she... Picks them up, barehanded, surgeon, what on earth, wraps them up in her coat, immediately in the garbage, can't wear that coat again. Yeah. Um, And takes them to the beach where she buries them in the dry sand. And the very shallow, shallow hole. Like six inches, maybe. Um, I have many issues, <laughs> like many criticisms of this whole process. 
But the worst one is then she's been taking pills to sleep. She takes one out of her purse, touches it with her bare hands that were just all over dead crows <laughs> and digging in dirty sand and just pops the pill from her mouth or from her hand right into her mouth. Disgusting. You are a surgeon. She's you, not doing great. You should know better. Yeah. So then she passes out. And then in, 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 when we see her again, she's woken up in like a scene from Mad Max, the one with Tina Turner. And I'm just like, there's like people doing motocross circles around her. There's a bonfire. There's a bunch of kids. Easily nope. there's like 15 people at this bonfire and nobody was like, excuse me, ma'am, are you okay? Can you can't call someone. You can't even argue that like they didn't notice her because they're like, the bonfire is like 15 feet what? away from her. I feel like it was like this. It was, I, I mean, she's maybe like laid out this way, but yeah. the girl was like. So close. So close. So she like, she wakes up and I feel like she thinks that she like did it like a, an Irish goodbye but, like, you know they all saw her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I think she thought she was being sneaky. Yeah. Getting away, and I don't buy it. Regardless, she's, she starts to leave to go back to the parking lot. She notices Cyprian's car again, um, and then he is, like, in the shadows watching her. And he's, like, he went in her boat earlier as well to, like, get clues to, like, what's going on. And he, I think, is starting to, like, be legitimately concerned. Because well, yeah. he's calling, what was his name, Samir? Yeah. Yeah. He's calling Samir and he's like, she needs to know at least something so she can like be safe. Mm -hmm. and, and all anyone keeps saying is, no, it would it would be better if she knew nothing. And it's like she's out here just like braining people magically left, yeah. right, and center. Like you need to tell her because when he touches the coat that she was wearing when she killed Lemley, mm -hmm. he is shocked. Like Cyprian is shocked, and he's like, "Oh shit!" Like this is actually. And Samir's only response is, "Well, what does she need to be? What does she need to keep herself safe for? That's what you're there for." And I'm like. He can't be everywhere at once. Right. And also she she can't handle the fact she knows that she's doing something. Exactly. And so she needs to like be helped from herself. Yeah, I agree. And I I just I hate this trope. The well, got to keep it from her. Yeah. Got to keep it from her. That's the best way to keep it to keep her safe. Yeah. It's the best thing for everybody. And it's just like, no, no, things are beyond out of hand at this I point. I compared it to Harry Potter in episode one. And yes. I'm going to keep that comparison going because yeah. it's like, it's it, the, this whole, what, what oh, I forgot what they called it. The like organization. Uh, uh, Temescula? Something like that. Yeah. So I'm just sort of like. <laughs> kind of maybe Temecula, but, but I know that's in California. But, different, but it's like Temescula, I think. So it's like, that's the thing for me is it's like that organization is like Dumbledore where it's like, you can't just parcel out like one ounce of information right. every like time that you feel like, well, now they need to know something because do you want to know how you end up in the clutches of Beth Grant? That's how you end up in the clutches of Beth Grant. Yeah. Basically, they have like a talk and he's like, I know things about you. If we could just go somewhere safe and talk, I'm not a danger to you. I don't know who Daniel Lemley is. Like, please just like, let's go somewhere and talk. And she starts giving him a brain bleed. And then she's like, oh, shit. And so she gives him CPR. She calls 911. I, did she give him a brain bleed? Because I thought it was more of his power oh. because he touched her. He did. But he had his glove on. But I think because she's so powerful, it like. Well, I think glove. maybe like a strange man touching you in the dark at the beach. I think maybe she might have like. Maybe. So regardless, which whichever it was, it ends up being like okay he gets in the ambulance the emts are like i think you saved him like cool you can't come with us in the ambulance but you can follow behind so she does snag his phone and manages to open it with his face <laughs> which i thought your eyes had to be open um i don't know i not important but yeah i mean there are a lot of times when my phone will unlock when i'm like you yeah know what okay I mean? <laughs> and i'm like i don't think i ever went <laughs> like that when i was doing the face Fair recognition enough. So she's able to find a bunch of pictures of young Deirdre and her mother and a ton of pictures of herself and then some pictures from like the 20s. It's and like then, the 20s, the Victorian era. Yeah, there's like tons of pictures of like weird past stuff. And then there is a picture of her mother and young Deirdre out front of the Mayfair house. Mm -hmm. um, so she, and it's like captioned New Orleans and everything. So she immediately is like, well, I'm going to New Orleans. Um, but she does follow to the hospital and it turns out Cyprian was like 
piece. He ripped out his own IV and ran away is how the EMT I, describes it. So I've only had an IV like maybe twice. I would never want to just rip that shit out of my hand. That shit hurts. Yeah, it depends. I mean, yeah. Either way. Yeah. I mean, because remember uh, that one time I went to go give plasma and uh-huh. they like did it wrong. And then I was like, you guys, and yeah. there's just blood it's everywhere. Just, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to touch it. It's horrible. So all these people that are just like, Ugh, Yank. Or, Ugh, yeah, it just, it seems too much, guys. There's so many in like apocalypse scenario. Yeah. Like, um, like The Walking Dead, especially. And um, uh, 28 Days Later, because like both of those, the like hero of the piece wakes up in a hospital after it's already so there's no doctors so they mm-hmm. have to like unhook themselves from everything horrible so she decides to go to new orleans uh she makes it there she's staying at the poncho train uh which looks bougie as hell i don't know if it's real or not i would like to go to there it looks nice and she like she gets there she has a really weird interaction with the uh front desk guy whose real name is choppy uh Gwilet? Gwilot? Choppy. Yeah, okay. I like That's I like that. I like that. <laughs> so that was very interesting because he's like he calls her Miss Fielding and she says doctor and he's like, okay. And then they keep going and she is like me in the meantime listening to like a ghost tour. So it takes her a minute to like take her key from him. But then he very snidely calls her doctor as she's walking away. I don't know. There was something really off about that interaction that i'm wondering if we're going to come back to it at any point i don't know he might have just been snarky for the sake just being of, snarky that's yeah. fine so she she gets intrigued by the ghost to her lady and she does find her uh later and she buys her a drink and asks if she knows the house and she's like yep that's the mayfair house they're witches um is like the old story huge parties at the turn of the century like all this basic stuff and she's like would you be able to point it out to me for 100 dollars She's like, you got it, toots. After she paid her bar bill, too. Whatever. I just think it's, like, too generous. You could have done it for way less than that. She's going through a hard time. That's she's true. Just- and she is a surgeon. She's got money to burn. Yeah. So it's whatever. Um, Where is she? Is in, like, Chicago? Did we decide where she was? Where, like, she's actually located? Who, Rowan? Yeah. San Francisco. San Francisco. Because mm-hmm. I was like... I noticed all the California license plates and I was like, this is really foggy for mm. California. And then um, something said San Francisco on it. I was like, never mind. I'm there. Okay. She's like, I'll meet you in the lobby tonight at five. That's great. Uh, oh, you know what? I actually, we forgot to talk about the, um, the old timey, the like 1600s. Yeah. 1681. Yeah. I think it was in uh, Scotland. With Aoife and Flory. Um, I don't really know. I assume Aoife is like a ancestor. I would assume, especially because she had the the murder of crows yeah. above her head in the tree. While she was jerking off a dirty guy with Ugh. her dirty hands and face and clothes and her poor baby sister just like... Naming plants. Counting herbs across the way. Um, so that was sort of interesting. I'd be excited to get more like backstory i Mm -hmm. guess oh also when she was flying to new orleans and she was staring at the photo of young deirdre and her mother there was lasher i want to get there too there was lasher in the background Mm -hmm, yeah which we were like that's interesting he showed up in a photo yeah because we thought he was a specter though i guess i don't know since it was on um since it was on Cyprian's phone, does his power maybe help him enable him to do something like that? I don't that? think he would translate to and, a photograph. Yeah. I mean, but they, with the whole thing with like ghost inspectors and whatever, like they can manifest if they want to manifest. Yeah. And if he's powerful enough, and at that point he wasn't fully attached to Deirdre. Yeah. So they weren't in the dark place together. He might be able to, to physically manifest okay, fair enough. in that way. Yeah. Um, but also, Deirdre woke up. Yeah. Like, really woke up. Um, like, like, all at once. Yeah. It was... Okay, I dig it. I also loved that Delphine just let her go. <gasps> Me too! That was fantastic. I really uh, quite enjoyed that because uh, Carlotta is something else. Yeah, I, I love Beth Grant so much, but I was getting... Have you seen Donnie Darko? No. She's got this line in Donnie Darko where she... I don't remember who... She's talking to one of the moms, and she's like, Sometimes I doubt your commitment to sparkle motion. 
which is like the name of the girl little girl's dance team. Oh my god. And I just every time she says anything, that's like sort of all I can think about and she's got this sort of insane shrieking to her voice mm-hmm. when she's playing and, characters like this. And her cadence is yeah. is funny. Delphine, where is my raincoat? <laughs> Just she'll catch a chill. It's very funny. Yeah. So Deirdre wakes up um, and she and Delphine lets her escape and she immediately goes to well, Portland. Before that, though. Oh, yeah. so she still has to pretend that she's for like one out. more day. Yeah. yeah. And so she goes she's put to bed and then she is walking around her room yeah. and then picks up her Paris snow globe and then chucks it at the fucking wall. And it's like, ma'am, you're supposed to be catatonic. She's making a lot of noise. Yeah. And then... I don't know. I feel like maybe Carlotta takes pills to go to sleep. Who knows? Or she gets into sherry. She seems like a sherry drinker okay, more than anything. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. Sherry or, like, really cheap brandy. Yeah. Okay. Very much that. Um, and then she, like, cuts her fucking hand. And it was like, like a whole you're, thing. you're doing too much. But so then she calls Lasher forth and then she, they're talking about how awake she is and how she's more beautiful than ever. And then they fucking bone down, but she's also boning down herself. And then Rowan can feel it when she's on the plane. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't have to deal with like a, a flight attendant coming over and being like, ma'am, <laughs> please stop climaxing <laughs> at 30,000 feet. It doesn't count for the Mile High Club if you're alone. <laughs> My God. it. And so, like, we got flashes of, like, Deirdre and Lasher Mm -hmm. being in an embrace, but then we cut to, like, her, like, masturbating. So, yeah. yeah. Well, because I don't think he's real. Like, I don't don't think he's corporeal. I agree with you. So I think that she is, like, like, I think she can feel him. Yes. But I think if anybody else came in the room, it would look like she was just getting off. Yeah. Weird. And then I don't, because I don't understand who Rowan's father is. So like it's the it's the boy that Cortland picked out. Okay. I think biologically it's the boy. Okay. But, but like, like spiritually, I'm afraid that it's Lasher, and then that's fucking weird. Okay, here's the thing is like I think Lasher is sort of beyond that sort of thing. Uh-huh. And I think he I think he wants her like for like power. That doesn't mean I don't think they're gonna bone, but I think he wants I think he wants Rowan for power. Yeah. I don't think it's like, I don't think he feels fatherly towards her. Yeah. Well, I mean, what happened in Sabrina? Did did Lucifer want to marry Sabrina? Even yeah. though that was her father? Yeah, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't sexual. It was no, like to keep it in the family. No, kind I, of. no I know. But so that, that, that I'm doing the mental processing yeah. in the moment. Mm-hmm. So it's like, this is kind of related, but also like, don't, don't let your daughter feel that. That's I gross. like my fantasy incest the way Game of Thrones intended. <laughs> it's like, ah. And that's a very new experience for me since I started watching TV with you guys. So I'm just like, I don't know how I feel about this yet. I still have weird lines. It's between blonde twins or uncles and nieces only. <laughs> I don't know. This feel, it, it was not cool only because it seemed he was fucking her mother and her at the same time in this episode. Also, I every time there's something like this, I always think of that episode of Friends where Monica goes out with um, Richard's son, who's played by Michael Vartan. Oh, yeah. And he, she's like, I just never wanted to say that's not how your dad would have done it or something <laughs> like that. And I'm just like, that's like, that's where I draw the line. Like, yeah. you're not in good as good in bed as your mom. Like, ugh. No. What Ooh, on earth? That happened in that Nexium documentary I watched. Like, he was fucking the daughter and the mother. No. And yeah, not no. at the same time, but like, that's there was... irrelevant. Things, I know, but it's just... <laughs> Disgusting. It's a big no thank you for me. Yeah. Okay, so then okay, so Deirdre, she goes to so, Cortland. Yeah, so she goes to Cortland. Mm-hmm. And he like everybody is very like, oh my god, you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> but like nothing beyond that. Yeah. They're just sort of like, but it appears he does know what Carlotta's been doing to her. Right. Where he's like, I never agreed with like blah blah blah. And my husband was like, she she like got to where you are by walking. So like, how could you have not done anything? I wonder if there are wards on the Mayfair house. So even if Carlotta oh. doesn't necessarily practice, like if anything, I feel like Carlotta probably is practiced in light magic and then um, everyone else is like dark magic. So maybe there are wards or like they've done something to keep Cortland out. So he can't. Cause I was even thinking maybe like just legally. Maybe. Like, legally, she's Carlotta's ward somehow. Maybe. 
Regardless, he gets her a beautiful blue dress. She was really fast and loose with those high heels after not walking for <laughs> literal know. decades. I feel like because of Lasher, I sort of feel like... Ah, uh, maybe. There's, it's magic. There's some magic shit going yeah. on. So she does a spell um, at Cortland's house to, like, get into, like, find out where Rowan is. She's like, she's already, I like, I can find her with his help and I have to see her, you know, it's been so long, blah, blah, blah. So she does a spell and she's like, she's already here. And she goes straight to the Pontchartrain where, unfortunately, Carlotta is also, like, holding court about something. The garden club. The, uh, the garden club. I would assume, yeah. So. Oh, also, on that note. I think it's really interesting that Lasher went to go touch Rowan and Deirdre said said no. no. Mm -hmm. And he did. He, he like listened to her. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he has no choice because she commands him. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So they find out where she is and they go over there. Deirdre has a confrontation with Carlotta and he, it's the gaslighting for me. I know. Because she's like, your daughter is long dead. And like, you're a sick, sick, sick little bird. And I'm just like, I don't know. She's standing on her own two feet. She walked across town more than once today. Like, in turquoise silk, ma'am. Yeah, she's doing good. Two of the nines. Also, that dress looks incredible on Annabeth Gish. She's keeping it tight. Yeah. And so then Cyprian also calls Rowan around the same time. And uh, basically, they agree to meet in the lobby. Of the Pontchartrain where like he got there pretty quick. Yeah. Too. He must have been like either right on her tail or he ran from the ambulance straight to the airport. <laughs> I feel like it's that. Because he's probably like, oh fuck. And when he realized he yeah. didn't have his phone, he's like, I I gotta go. I gotta I gotta yeah. fly to catch. So uh they agree to meet there and talk about everything. <sighs> Deirdre takes the elevator up to the 10th floor. And it opens, and Rowan is standing right there, and she recognizes her. What did I miss? She stopped at the sixth floor. The elevator she did stop, stop at the six. elevator stopped at the sixth floor, and it's because we can see the thing going, and it stopped That's at the sixth. Right, and then it, it went up to the tenth, and I was like, "Ooh, who's on the elevator?" It's nobody. It's just Deidre, and they have like this whole moment, and Rowan it's goes, beautiful. "It's you." She goes, "It's you," and then all of a sudden, Deidre just starts bleeding. And collapses. Yeah. And fucking, oh my God. When Rowan goes in there, yeah. her head tilts back and there is space in oh, between. Oh yeah, it was gnarly. Ugh. It Super was gnarly. insane. And so then Rowan is just screaming as one does when horrible. they're holding their possibly decapitated mother in the elevator. Truly really horrible. Yeah. I, I don't know. My money's on Carlotta. See, I think Lasher. Why though? Because, because he's he doesn't bound? need her anymore. But sh- I guess. What the hell? I like- could. Okay, but that's okay. But it's so. It's so short sighted because now. Rowan is in the clutches of Carlotta. In the preview for next week. But, I think Rowan is more powerful than any trickle of power that Deidre had. Mm. So I think any attempt from Carlotta to try to keep her there, I, you know, just Rowan would have to think a little too hard and then RIP to Carlotta. Um, I'm like, I'm bummed. That's like two, two actresses and characters that I was like not ready to lose in the span of the first two episodes. I'm a little bummed. Yeah. I wonder if we'll get like flashbacks. Like or like if her if like Annabeth Gish spirit or something will like maybe yeah maybe because I mean yeah I don't know I don't know because I don't think Beth Grant would be fast enough and I but we also don't know if she well because she just she keeps throwing God around and stuff yeah. so I don't. I just want to know if she's practicing. That's I'm confused on. Yeah, me too. Because I I want to know where the disconnect is. Because I she well, feels it, very divorced from the practice. It so would I don't... make sense if she wasn't, because that would also explain the like rift between her and Cortland. Yeah. So, but I mean, and there there can be a choice between like you choose to practice light versus dark magic. There's no way she's practicing light magic. She's so terrible. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. I'm curious, but I I my money is on Lasher. Okay, I mean that's fine. I'll allow it. I'll be bummed, but I'll allow it. 
Because, I mean, he's just... Yeah. He don't need her. Yeah. And the, I think the whole reason why he even picked Deidre in the first place is because he could tell that there was, like... Something coming. Yes. Yeah. And so she was but a vessel. A means to an end. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, I'm still loving it. This episode... Me too. ...was good. I just had so many questions. Me but too. for me, that's yeah. a good sign that it's yeah. interesting because I just, I want to know more. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, that's it for today. We will be back next week with episode three. Bye. Bye.